everyone, welcome back to another episode of your Daily Toast. It's been a minute, obviously there's not a lot going on in the world of Dynasty Origins Pioneer, or is there? Let us have a look together. Celebrate Festival. It looks like we're going to get some tactics. I like tactics. My issue with tactics is they're so damn expensive to build. Are they powerful? Yes, very powerful. Should you build them? Absolutely. But would you spend money on them? To be fair, tactics are the most expensive items in the game to actually purchase to build. Mainly because... I kind of want to just preface this. Because even at the base form, you can upgrade them using all the stuff you already know how to do that. Up until a certain level, and then you need an additional copy of a said tactic. Um, unless, of course, they take the Mythic or the Arcane version of them. But because these are Arcane, it pretty much means you just have to keep purchasing until you can build a couple of them. So, what should you do? If you are looking to go pure offensive, I feel like the Yak is not going to let you down. In terms of what it does, though... Let's go and have a quick keys. Now, Ocean Yak, very interesting. Would not have picked the Yak as a water beast, but there you go. At the start of the battle, reduces all attack and defense. It is a debuff. And inflict Super Conduit, or Super Conductive, the last for the entire battle. 70% chance to summon the Ocean Yak when an enemy takes action, i.e. does pretty much anything. And the Ocean Yak deals magic damage to all enemies, so an AoE type attack of 800%. The damage doubled against three enemies with the lowest HP, trying to finish them off. For every one fewer target, damage is increased by 25%. It also inflicts all enemies with overcharge. This last one round, and at the end, it reduces their damage and damage bonus and their accuracy 30% per round, uh, up to two times per round and eight times per battle. So there's an additional debuff on the afflicted targets. At the end of the first, or should I say fourth round, the Ocean Yak can be summoned an extra time without counting towards the limit. So at round four, you get this guy to pop out again. These are the statistics. Good, bad, ugly. I feel like if they thrown in chance for paralysis, that might have worked a little bit better. The only reason I say that is because as much as debuffs and all of that are nice, uh, particularly the accuracy one, that, that can be interesting if uh, you can stack those ones over time with anything else. But in terms of that, it's pretty much just raw, raw statistics. I'm interested to see what the passive is, though. So, allies total damage, again, 30% buff. Uh, total damage reduction is 15%, so you get more attack than defense. Um, all stats of heroes with tactics plus 10%. Interesting. Uh, basically, anyone with an, a, a tactic that's equipped, I assume, is getting an additional 10% directed towards them. Um, if enemies don't have elemental tactics or their elemental tactics are weak against this tactic, all allies total damage increased and total damage reduction increased by 20% uh, for the entire battle. So anything is that is weak against old mate Yak over here, um, water is strong against wind, wind is strong against lightning, lightning is strong against water. So the corresponding tactic that these guys would be fighting, you do get an additional 20% damage increase or should i say damage increase and damage reduction against that is it really going to make a great deal of difference i mean the grand scheme of things probably not <laughs> probably not are you still going to build it yes or should you go flying serpent i have shifted my perspective from raw dps value to support value i feel like as the game continues down the narrative of op 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 damage mitigation is kind of shall i say if you get your damage mitigation right it doesn't really matter 
a great deal how bursty the enemy team is in round one or two because you can pretty much outlast their main ultimate abilities. Therefore, my perspective is you should probably be working towards as much damage mitigation early on. And by that, I mean healing, shielding, and shielding armor plates from your actual weapons. At the start of the battle, increase all those attack and defense and shield point by 20% max HP and grant them win ward that lasts for the entire battle. 70% chance to summon the flying serpent when all an ally takes action, similar to the yak. The flying serpent grants all allies max HP, 25% shield points and heals three allies with the lowest HP. Um, and basically, max HP exceeds the healing would be converted into shield points. So... Anything over the top of their maximum HP, if they're at full HP, they basically get into shield points. Also grants Eye of Storm and increases their damage reduction, bonus and accuracy by 30% for one round, up to two rounds, up to eight times during the battle. Very similar to the Yak, but this time we're talking about shields. Shields and healing instead of raw magic damage. At the start of each fourth round, you get a Flying Serpent. Again, Wind Ward, Block attack 200 percent damage when attacked so this is increasing your block chance meaning the enemy needs to have a stronger pierce rating than your block so that they will actually do damage to you when the shield breaks for the first time block exceeds damage and receives shield points by 50 percent max hp interesting interesting huh out of both of them i'm leaning towards flying serpent over the storm, block damage for one incoming attack and reflect all its debuffs. That's actually pretty strong. Over the storm is pretty strong if it can reflect the debuffs that are meant to be coming towards you and then essentially putting them back on an enemy team member slash whole team, depending on what debuffs are uh, directed towards you. That's pretty interesting. I like that. Let's have a look at the passive. Wind Tactics, Allies Damage Reduction, 30%, Allies Total Damage Increase, 15%, again, pretty generic. All Stats, plus 10%, of course, we already knew that was going to be it. And then, of course, if this one is fighting a Lightning-based tactic, you do an extra 20% damage and have Damage Reduction. Interesting. I feel like this one's a better buy but I'm still going to buy the other one anyway. I would say that the Flying Serpent, yeah, Flying Serpent, it's got me got me thinking that one would be a better one. Let me know in the comment section down below who do you think, the Yak or the Serpent, and give me a reason why. I'm always curious to know your thoughts on the process. Of course, listen, the event's always going to require you to spend resources, this is essentially the free-to-play element. If you saved up your star karmas, your star gazing things for these types of events, spend them, grab the free resources. Don't overspend, honestly. No no real point in doing that. Try and get what it is, 65. Uh, well, I guess, look, we'll do another 10 bomb because we can. Why not? I don't think you get very lucky with these star gazing anyway. Because at this stage, we're in the mythic era. We kind of need a lot more of those ones uh, than anything else. But Caravan, um, what's this one? Oh, yep, we just got to do that one. And then Beast Expedition. This one's pretty cool. You, you essentially just go in here and challenge this guy and then go back out and go and challenge him again. Where is he? Challenge him again and go back out and challenge him again. <laughs> you get the picture. You can do all of this in day one. It still counts towards it. Just don't kill the beast or you have to swap to the next one. And basically, that is it for it in a nutshell. Is there anything that they upgraded in terms of purchasable items? Hmm. Drumsticks, 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 drumsticks. Give me some drumsticks. Oh, okay. You know, it is what it is. Pretty sure these ones have been around for a while anyway. But if you're looking to finish off your Mythic Generation monsters, heroes, and weapons, 
go ahead and but those otherwise maybe this one honestly not a bad thing to buy into these ones they're a little bit hard to get i'm debating between military and vocation stones um i think though i think i mentioned this before but you definitely should be getting these because these ones i think these ones have a vocation stones in them, don't they yeah absolutely so you kind of want to be doing these this one every single day <laughs> it's actually really important um, so make sure you do that little, uh, world side mission. Don't be lazy like PB does. Otherwise you'll get a really weak account for a VIP 12. Um, all jokes aside though, I don't play this game as seriously as I used to. Uh, but I still enjoy creating content for all of you lovely people. So I think realistically, the last thing we want to talk about is I want to finally finish off one of my boards and arms race. I think there's a lot of I guess, debate about what to spend on these days. And to be fair, they added some things. They added the Arcane Tactics because thus they're releasing the other tactics so it makes sense. The rotation is there. Um, expensive to build. Keep that in mind. They, they are rather expensive to build even if you have 10 of each, which uh, I feel like to even get 90 of them, how many would that be? Oh, math is hard. Someone let me know in the comment section down below. I'm going to I'm gonna ballpark it and say it's going to take at least 400 to 500 of these gold merit badges to get one completed. Well, you need, you need 90, so you need to get, what is that, 90. So, ugh, how many do I need of that? So if I was going to purchase one out, so that's 10... So that's 50, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50. We're already at like 250 of these. So we'd need like, what, 470 thereabouts. Like I said, math is hard. But I think you need like four to 500 um, of these gold merits in order to grab one of these tactics. Absolutely worthwhile doing it. Out of the two... I would lean towards the Misty Tiger because, again, I feel like damage mitigation and shield points is a little bit more valuable uh, at this stage of the game than the offensive sides of things. But let me know if, how you feel that. You know, do you agree with PB on that one or are you just like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. But today, I feel like we are going to be building our first Arcane Charm. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Kind of a little bit cheaper when you think about it. So it's for 25 gold merits. We actually get 10 instead of 5. I'm very grateful about that. Um, we have 60 and we need 50 more. So uh, I don't think there's anything here. I think all we need to do is grab 50 more of these. Pretty sure I only need 50, right? Well, we're going to find out real quick. <laughs> uh, and of course, we've probably already gotten everything set up for this guy. There we do. We've got both of the affinities. So why don't we go ahead and grab this one out? Now, it has been a very late minute since I've actually done anything, but these combination charms are exceptionally OP. <laughs> not for like necessarily the power that you acquire um but they're just really strong so we'll go through and read exactly what they do uh four random allies dealing temporal damage 40 450 percent temporal damage to the target inflict pierced when the affected target receives damage around the adjacent target will also receive 25 of this damage last two rounds increase all eyes healing shield damage reduction all of that, all healing allies for 25% of their attack damage. Transfers a total of three debuffs from allies to enemy evenly. So basically, it mitigates debuffs and switches them over. Now, if you were going to say which one's the better one, I feel like you could probably get either or. I've you know, People would argue that Marchow's one is, is better. Um, me personally, I don't care about any of that. <laughs> I just got what makes sense to me. Um, these ruins though, these ruins are expensive. We're going to go with attack. Attack is pretty much the raw percentage. Attack and accuracy are the best ones in my opinion to start out with and then rotate around for the damage percentages before you go raw damage. The only reason being is because, well, damage percentage gives you better statistics. But overall, um, I mean, I may just, 
I may just get this to one star. Maybe I should level this charm up. Should I level the charm up? I don't know. I will put you in slot one. I'll put you there. I'll put you there. Kind of makes sense to me. Right? Demonstration. Let's look at the demonstration. Extra damage. Inflicts the pierced. Heals. Transfers. Debuffs. They're pretty OP. Like, you definitely want to do this maybe slot one, slot two. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing as well on the account is I think we had enough of these to get Dao Chan leveled up one more level. Uh, we did, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Maybe I'll buy some more and start working on Hao Tao. I'm not sure just yet because I want to see how much it's going to cost me to get this one actually enlightened. How much is it going to cost? Uh, oh, how do I find that out? Heroes. Uh, 40, 40, 40. I think it's going to cost me like 300, right? I want to say it's going to take about 300 shards. <laughs> uh, should I do it for five star? Absolutely. Um, whew. what did we get with that one? What did we get with you? We got accuracy 60%. That's, that's big. That's pretty big. I, I will say I do I do quite enjoy the idea of that one. <laughs> uh, but overall, I think it would be wrong for us not to at least finish off this thing. So where's my board at? Where is my board? And then we can do some, uh, I guess we can do some PvP. Test out to see how strong the Arcane Charm is. See exactly what sort of damage that we can get with it. Uh, the rest of the Gold Merit Badges, I might just save them. Waiting for the Arcane Generation 2 heroes to come out might not be a bad idea to save those uns up. Or alternatively, I might go ahead and start building it towards Zhang He. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think I should do with the rest of my ones. But all those clashes up, already got the silver bracket. What do I need to do? Let me think about this. I need to find... I need to find Summit. I need to find Summit. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Might do some PvP here and and, uh, and see whether or not we can get along with that one. Now, what did we need to buy? How many of these do I have? I have 612. I'm doing things back to front. <laughs> Don't mind me. I want to find this silly thing. There we go. Formation port. So we only had one left. I think you only needed 430 to do it. My board looks like this. I'm not adverse to doing plus HP, but to be fair, defense, attack, I mean, the options are kind of limited. Um, it costs 60 to activate the form for board formation. It actually costs you 60 of those to unlock so that you get the bonuses and all that other stuff. So keep that in mind. These things, this is deceitful because you probably think, Oh, you know, I got enough PB, you know, I shouldn't buy those ones. No, that is incorrect. If <laughs> you need 60 of them. Uh, so it actually, it lined up perfectly. So I feel like a lot of players have probably uh, unlocked this within this week, uh, this rotation, I should say. Uh, but ultimately, you can still you can still switch around to what you think is best in terms of statistics. Now, it's plus 2% and then it times it out. And I feel like... Vertical or horizontal, you can't really get five, can you? Like, there's legitimately no way to get five of these ones to link up. So you're going to kind of decide which way you would like to, I guess, roll the dice. Um, attack or HP or defense. Is there a better one? Probably. Mm, not really. Not really. But these ones here give you five. Whereas these ones only gave you four options, so one, two, three, four, five. So this one's going to give you the bonuses as well. Obviously, if you match etc. etc., you will get more of the bonuses. Um, vertical and horizontal activate eight defense. I don't think this will work this way, but let's just see whether or not. Yeah, there we go. So you can actually do it like this if you were looking to get the, like, I want to say, if you're looking to get the maximum out of that you could sort of set the board up like that but again you're kind of breaking 
you're breaking up the board, which is not fantastic. So at that point, you decide whether or not you want attack 8% or you want the additional defense at 8%. Um, in saying that, though, in saying that, maybe we could go like this. What do you reckon? Could we go like this? 6%? No, we could not. <laughs> All right, enough of trying to manipulate the board. That is not going to work out. All right. Anyway, let me know in your perception which way is the best way to run your board. And um, I'm curious to know. I really am. I do feel like the defense and attack and all of that, you can try to maximize and get the 8%. Um, instead of the 2%, it kind of makes sense to do that. I'm not going to lie. But in saying that, yeah, it's up to you. Maybe we'll run it like that. 8%? No, we kind of want the attack. Let's just go with the attack. I like attack more than anything else. All right. These ones, activation costs, though, are a little bit more expensive. So filling out this board is going to take a little bit longer. Let's see if we can make some headway with our ranking. Let's go up here. Let's see how far we can climb. Maybe we can get 58. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Realistically, I just want to see the combination charm go off. Um... And see how much damage we actually do at the end of the fight. The wind-up stage is ridiculous. <laughs> the stuns are ridiculous. The paralysis is ridiculous. Everything is ridiculous. It just takes forever these days. This is again why I would say that in terms of the tactics, it is much better to go with, I want to say, defensive tactics than it is to go with the offensive type. And that's just my opinion. Obviously, you don't have to go with it, but I just, yeah, I just feel like watching the gameplay, the more ma more damage mitigation you have, the more damage uh, shielding you have, the more healing you have that converts into shielding because of the excess healing amounts. It just, it's like a revolving door, right? Um, and particularly because the divine weapons, aka your arcane weapons, um, they both, like the three of them at the moment, or at least I know two of them, I think actually only two, two give armor plating. So again, that's even more additional layers of damage mitigation to prevent you from dying round one, uh, two or three basically. So in my opinion, I do feel like it is much safer to go with the defensive tactics. If you are going to be spending money in this event, now, of course, most whales will probably just buy all of them, but yeah, that's my two cents if you're on a budget. Uh, if you're curious, it probably is going to cost you around 70 USD, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on where you are. The only reason being is because you need to spend like 25 of those lamb shanks instead of 10 um, to get the shards. So they, oh, is that me? Did I do that? Was that, was it me? That was exciting. I, I was excited. I missed it. I was that excited. <laughs> uh, I'd say we win this one. But you can't, you can't assume you're going to beat Marshall, you know? It's, it'd be a mistake to think that. But the ceiling, the ceiling ability is pretty nasty in this game, which I still feel like it's a little bit underrated from that tactic. Uh, that tactician is he's quite annoying if he can seal the enemy team because, again, it's, it acts like a sky piercer. Uh, with its ability to mute, uh, preventing all action from that hero. I think this one is pretty much it. Pretty much game over. Still going with old mate Zhang Fei. That's um, that's ambitious of you. I don't know if that was intentional, but there you go. So we did manage to do a little bit of that. Let's have a look at the statistics. Of course, Dao Chan was always going to be rocking it. Um, ironically, uh, Sky Blazing. I mean, not terrible, not terrible, not fantastic, but it only really went once. I don't know. What would you expect to see from a combination charm? In my opinion, it's more about the effect than the overall damage. Um, but let me know in the comment section down below, which combination charm did you go for? Uh, yeah, you know, I might do both. I might just buy, I might just buy and build both. I, I feel like that, that's not a terrible idea. Can we actually sneak into 50th though? This one would be, this is a little bit of an ambitious fight. I don't feel like, um, 
I don't feel like we will be able to do it. I'm not going to lie. Well, let's see. Just have a look and see how this Zhao Un goes off. <clears throat> but it would be nice to sneak into 50th place to be able to get that a couple of um, mythic selection tactics. Uh, not tactics. I've got tactics in my mind. Um, what are they called? The Stargazing Karma boxes. Because I need to start building towards those ones. And this, this is the thing, you got to remember, this game is always going to be geared towards the next era, so if you are got mythic items, spoiler alert, they're all going to become uh, arcane items, and that's just basically the requirement <laughs> that you're going to be going with. Ooh, oh no, I think we got stun locked. This is not great. Good old Valor, I like that, like to see that. We are stun locking a lot of them though, which is fantastic, and then we died. Not so fantastic. Transform, Dao Chan. Do your thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Xiaon will kill himself, though. Maybe he'll kill himself on the reflect. Who knows? Mm. Let's see if we can actually do something. That'd be great. <laughs> It'd be great if we could actually do something. And this, and again, it's like the more layers of p mitigation you have, the less likely that you are going to be killed. Even if the team gets, uh, even if the enemy team gets a, like a large wind up on you. <sighs> but no, we did get annihilated there. Did we seal anyone? I didn't think we sealed anyone. Anyway, let's skip ahead. I'm going to keep fighting this guy a couple more times. Then we might call it quits because unfortunately I haven't been doing the Warlords. So it wouldn't make any sense to watch me just hit skip. But let us know in the comment section down below. Are you excited for what's coming next? I do believe that they will have the Generation 2 heroes out. Which means Zhao Xi will be joining our team. Fingers crossed. Um... I definitely will be trying to save up for those ones. In the next coming limited hero events, I would recommend saving up your tokens for the Gen 2s. Uh, because like I said, they probably will be out this month. I would be highly skeptical if they weren't. Damn. Always cutting me down with this damn paralysis round one. You gotta love that though. Gotta love that. I mean, it's not like I'm not doing it to their team as well. But that bloody dragon... <laughs> oh the annoyance the absolute sheer annoyance i'm gonna skip ahead i'm gonna see if i can finally get one where i don't and then we might call it quits if you don't stun me round one there is a chance that dao chan will kill the rest of your team we just have to wait and see i am playing one piece though if anyone's curious about that if anyone likes the one piece sagas I might do some videos on that game there. I've been wailing pretty hard on it. And I have to say, it's very similar to AFK Arena and this game. Pretty rewarding. Oh, we didn't get stunned. Would you look at that? But we managed to stun them. Oh, maybe this will be the day. Maybe this is the chance that we need. Unfortunately, Zhang He also got stunned, which sucks. Um, come on, buddy. Do your thing. Wait a second. I know we didn't get stunned. Why is Dao Chan not attacking? That's odd. That is odd. I didn't see any skip mitigation either. <laughs> He's going to kill himself on me. <laughs> I hope you kill yourself on me, Ma Chao. I really do. Yeah, reflect the damage and kill him. <laughs> Maybe we're a little bit over ambitious with our taking of this. You know, honestly, though, if I skipped it like 20 times, I reckon I would probably win. It really just comes down to the RNG, which is cool and all. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, we, we managed to, uh, we managed to charm lock this one. That'll be interesting. Of course, my MC is still freaking CC'd. It would be nice if you stopped being CC'd so that we could get a double charm lock off. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but this is the game. So if this is looking interesting, if you're new or visiting to the channel, of course, welcome. Make sure you jump over to our Discord. It's not super active, but people in there will be able to answer your question or refer you to the right place. Of course, if you see me on Facebook, don't be afraid to add me there and say hello as well. Always down for a good chat and like, share and comment on the post that helps the algorithm on YouTube as well. But I have been looking, earnestly looking for games to branch into. And I feel like a lot of players are either going to like this game at this stage, being the Arcane Era, and they're going to keep playing it because, you know, they enjoy playing it, or they've pretty much just transitioned away from it. Now, the reality is most mobile games are not free-to-play friendly. I don't feel like we need to say that uh, in any other version of a language. It's the fact. The fact is most of these games aren't. But Dynasty isn't as bad as others if you aren't looking to compete in terms of endgame. There are a lot of low spender slash free-to-play players that have ridiculously high power levels. I think that Lucy might be a free-to-play. She might be a low VIP. I do I actually do believe Miko might also be a low VIP based on their skins. So you can actually get a lot of VIP points as well. Um, you don't have to spend in order to enjoy these types of games, but I wouldn't take it too seriously either. There are already people with 30 or 40 trillion power. So in the grand scheme of things, unless you are looking to spend the size of a mortgage on this game, just enjoy it and pretty much, yeah, save your resources up and be a part of a community. Enjoy it that way. All right. This is PB signing out until next time. But like I said, let me know, did you buy the tactics? Did you get any advances and are you going for the serpent or the yak until next time